I started boxing when I was around 11 years old. <laughs> Believe it or not, I was a well overweight kid. Uh, I was about 13 and a half stone when I started boxing and I'm boxing now at 8 stone and 10. Um, so that, that was why I started, I started just to lose weight. The local gym to where I was living was shot in ABC, shot in Amateur Boxing Club. Um, I went there from 11, I think I had my first fight when I was about 12 years old. After my amateur career, I was moving to Chester. Um, that was the local gym, the closest gym was Chester Boxing Gym. Steve's got a very good reputation in the pros. Uh, he's been in Manchester for many years beforehand. Um, and so I, I started there and it was a completely different level from what I was used to. And we've built up a relationship ever since. I've been there for my whole pro career, which is now about six, seven years I've been pro. When he first came in, it was quite a long time ago now. And I had quite a quite a lot of amateurs in the gym then, lads that had got to finals and schoolboys and stuff like that. And Paul come in and he was of a high standard over in Wales. And where he'd come from, he'd boxed for Wales, he'd won championships over there. So, but when he came in here, it was a different ball game for him because we do a lot of technical stuff in here where he'd done a lot more off his aggression. So I had to change that and it took me a long time to get that out of him. I, I'm a very aggressive fighter, to be honest. Uh, obviously, you've got to have a great defence, but my, my, my style of fighting is very come forward. Uh, so I've got a very high work rate. He's very aggressive. Um, sometimes too much when he doesn't think. So I have to pull that back a little bit and get him to think about the things that we've done in here. And we just have to work off things like that, you know, and I have to remind him what I want him to do and not let his heart rule his head. His head's got to rule everything. It helps. When, when you're in the ring, I'd say you're, you're in game mode and nothing, you don't think of anything else. All, all you think about is what's in front of you and how you've got to overcome your opponent. Every time I go back to the corner, Steve will remind me what I've got to do. And I'm pretty sure we've probably done it a hundred times in the gym before. It's just putting it into action on fight night. He knows me better than I know myself when it comes to boxing. Yeah, it's, it's a long camp. We usually do about a 10 week camp. Uh, diet's always a big part of it as well. Training twice a day. Uh, family life, obviously, we've got to go around the boxing as well and any distractions of going out and going to restaurants, they usually stop for 10 weeks. So it's, it's a whole team effort, really. Uh, it's quite difficult because you can't go out, you can't have the normal life that, you know, your friends and family have. Closer to the fight, He's very tired, he's very stressed, he's very hungry. Um, so at the start of when he first went professional, it was very difficult. Um, I found it very hard. His first loss, it, it was really bad because he got to a point where he'd, he'd had seven wins and we thought, you know, no losses. We thought he's never going to lose, he's so good. Um, so that first loss, it really hit him. And I remember we were going on holiday the day after the fight and we went to Venice for a week and he didn't talk all week. But now he's got got better. He's he can control his his ways a lot more. He's more calm now before fights. You know he comes home, plays with our daughter. They're just two little best friends playing together all day. So it's nice. It's it's a lot easier to live with now than he was at the start. This is not just about the gym. This is about what they do outside as well as well as what they do inside and how they live. It all gels together and Paul is lucky he's got that ability where he can he, he can go home, he's got a nice wife, nice family, he's not out drinking, he's not doing things he shouldn't be doing and that's what you need for this game. I'm 
very dedicated to the sport. I, I live the game. I don't drink. I try not to eat bad food. I don't smoke, I don't abuse myself. I've never done drugs. I, 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 live, I live a clean life and I'm well into healthy eating. I'm always into fitness, so I don't leave the gym. Obviously, with my job being personal training as well, I've got to preach it as well. So I actually, I, I do follow the clean life of a boxer. Well, they do that every day. I mean, they're in here all the time and they're, um, they condition themselves for doing that with the sparring and the road running and the, the circuit work and the dieting and they're going to bed early. It's all, all up here. It's all conditions up here for the final product, which is the fight. Yeah, I mean, I, I always put my family first, but that's one of the reasons I box. I, I want to achieve as much as I can. You, you can make a good living from boxing if you hit the big time. I'm nowhere near there yet, but hopefully one day I will be. Um, unfortunately, being from Chester, it's quite a small city. There's not a lot of companies, and especially not a big city for boxing either. Um, a lot of fighters from Liverpool that are even rated below me or Manchester, they, they do have sponsors and I've no idea how to get one, but yeah, let's hope we get some sponsors in the future and I can be a full-time pro one day. I don't like the boxing because it scares me. Um, the, the man I see in the ring, the way he changes in the ring, I change as well when I'm watching him. I'm a different person when I'm watching him. You know, I've never seen him get physically hurt that bad to be scared that something bad's going to happen. Um, but when you start seeing, um, say, if somebody puts him against the ropes and keeps hitting him and he can't get away from the ropes, I start to panic and I scream louder and I, I just can't control control myself really and that's why I've not been to his last three fights because um, they've been quite big fights and I, I just I, I can't take it to be honest it scares me it's very scary. I've won four boxing titles um, two British Masters titles at different weight classes I won the first one at Super Bantam and then went up to Featherweight and won that one as well um, and I've won the Super Bantam weight WBF International and Intercontinental title but them there are not where I want to stop I mean that there are no disrespect to the organizations that the low level titles I, I want to go for something like a WBC International which I have already fought for unfortunately missed out on a very close decision but hopefully we'll, we'll go back and challenge for more titles like that if not bigger titles Great respect, 96-94 in favour of the winner and the new WBC International Super Bantamweight Champion from Birmingham! I fought on the 15th of October in Liverpool. Um, I did a six round fight against a guy from Spain. Uh, I won quite comfortable that night and then I, I was basically off partying after that. The Sunday we were at home having a big roast dinner and I got a phone call then from my manager, um, Dave Colwell, saying we've got an opportunity for, to take on a fight. I was dead excited and then he tells me it was a Saturday of that week. So we had five days to prepare for a, a title fight that I know the guy that I was actually facing had 12 weeks to prepare for. But it was a risk I was willing to take because... It almost paid off. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Introducing to you. I knew it'd be tough because of the weight, because the lad had got to a certain weight. And we put weight on, so we had to drop it again. And we only had um, four days to do it in because we had to weigh in on the Friday. So I knew that it would be it would be hard on him, and I knew it would be be the tough four or five days you know but I knew it was a fight that in my eyes even if we got beat we couldn't lose 
if we'd have had that extra half a mile, that extra two, three penneth worth in us, I think we would have been in, we'd have given the kid a lot more problems than we did. But it was a really good fight, and the, you know, um, on the night, um, no one's moaning about it. The lad fought well, poor fought well. It was a really, really good contest. I thought it could have gone either way. A lot of people said there was oh, there was no losers in that fight because I came out with more credit than I did before I was in the fight. But at the same time, a lot of people, including the likes of Eddie Hearn, who's one of the biggest, well, if not the biggest promoter in Britain at the moment, he thought I had it. Um, he actually put on Twitter that he thought I had it by two rounds. And I went to Birmingham with 10 fans. The guy I was facing had hundreds of fans there. And at the end of the fight, I could hear my fans, not his fans. I thought I won. I think the crowd thought I won as well. So <laughs> it's onwards and upwards, I guess. You learn to cope. You learn to, to deal with things and it just... You, you feel sorry for him, say if he loses. Um, it's not so much, I don't so much think, is he hurt, more so than his pride, and he, he gets upset. Because obviously he doesn't want to lose. But And I know he's fighting, he's doing it for us as well as a family, so. I, it's all about the opportunities. If I, if I get the right opportunities, I believe I can have a decent title by the end of the year or next year I, w I want to be fighting for the likes of WBC International I don't think that was out of my grasp but again a lot of people thought I won that fight and I, I believe I did, I belong at that level if not bigger so it's, it's, if I get the opportunities I'll be taking those fights Well I'd like him to win a title I'd like him to win something British um, Commonwealth uh, an intercontinental, something like that, you know, something that he deserves, you know, because these things in boxing, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, one minute you've got nothing, and the next minute, phone goes, and the skill and the ability and the right fights there for us, we take it, and hopefully we win, and hopefully we can carry on and do a little bit more with it, you know, and maybe push him onto something else. Yeah, I think he could do really, really well. He's a really good boxer and he just needs to be recognised. I, I, I fight for the biggest title I can. If there was a chance of going for a world title one day, I'd be going for a world title. But I've got to take a step at a time. And I want to establish myself into the, the British rankings. I want people to know who I am and, and respect me as a boxer.